Hello and welcome to live chat on SIUK. I'm Dr. Mudita Samaranaike. I'm a rheumatologist working at Salford Royal Hospital in Manchester and Leighton Hospital in Mid Cheshire. As a rheumatologist, I see a lot of people with Raynaud's. Thank you for joining us today to share some information about Raynaud's. We will start by briefly reminding ourselves what Raynaud's phenomenon is, who can get Raynaud's, what the different types of Raynaud's are, how you diagnose Raynaud's, and what lifestyle measures you can take to manage your Raynaud's. Raynaud's phenomenon is a common condition that affects the blood supply to the distal parts of the body such as the fingers and toes. It can also be called Raynaud's syndrome, Raynaud's disease or just Raynaud's. The skin first turns white then blue. Fingers and toes can tingle or feel numb. When rewarmed, the skin flushes pink or red. Then there can be throbbing or soreness as the blood surges black back into the tiny blood vessels. During an attack of Raynaud's, the tiny blood vessels in your fingers and toes constrict or narrow. This is an effort by the body to conserve heat. With Raynaud's, these tiny blood vessels go into spasm, limiting the distal blood supply. This is usually a temporary effect. Who gets Raynaud's phenomenon? Almost 3% of the population is affected by Raynaud's. Although anyone can develop the condition, primary Raynaud's often begins between the ages of 15 and 30. It affects women more than men. This disorder is more common in people who live in colder climates. A family history appears to increase your risk. About one-third of people with primary Raynaud's have a first-degree relative, a parent, a sibling, or a child with the disorder. You may have noticed I mentioned primary Raynaud's there. No one knows what causes Raynaud's. However, there seem to be two distinct forms of Raynaud's phenomenon. People who do not have any other symptoms or conditions are said to have primary Raynaud's. People who have Raynaud's as part of another disease are said to have secondary Raynaud's. Secondary Raynaud's is commonly linked to connective tissue disorders such as scleroderma and lupus. How do you diagnose Raynaud's? A careful history alone can diagnose Raynaud's. People with Raynaud's see and feel changes in their fingers and toes when exposed to cold or stress. If you think you may have Raynaud's, talk to your doctor who can make the diagnosis. So do you need other investigations? If other symptoms are also present, blood tests and other procedures may be done to check for other diseases. Careful examination of the nail beds may show changes in the blood vessels. These changes may suggest an underlying condition such as scleroderma. More testing also is needed if symptoms are not typical, such as only one finger is being affected or only one hand is being affected, or the color changes seem to be permanent. These atypical symptoms would be unusual for Raynaud's. They could indicate another problem with circulation. Each episode of vasospasm is temporary. However, Raynaud's is a chronic condition. There is no way to prevent a person from developing Raynaud's. But once present, the number of attacks of Raynaud's can be reduced or even eliminated. The best way is to avoid situations that can trigger Raynaud's, as listed in this slide. Also, it is important to stop smoking or using cocaine. Some medicines, such as beta blockers, sometimes can worsen vasospasm. However, it is important to check with your doctor before making any changes to the medicine you take. Also, remember certain over-the-counter cold drugs can worsen Raynaud's as well. So in part two, we will look at what secondary Raynaud's is, the associated conditions, and the complications of secondary Raynaud's, 
and how you manage these. For most people, primary Raynaud's can cause significant discomfort, but is rarely dangerous. It is typically a lifelong condition. It frequently does not get worse. When Raynaud's is associated with autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, it is called secondary Raynaud's. Some people can develop a condition called scleroderma. What is scleroderma? It is a rare autoimmune connective tissue disease condition. Around 1 in 16 women and 1 in 50 men with Raynaud's develop this. Usually it happens between the ages of 25 and 55. In scleroderma, the body produces excessive levels of collagen. This can lead to hardening of the skin. Scleroderma is a Greek word meaning hard skin. However, it can affect other areas of the body, such as kidneys, heart, and lungs. Symptoms of scleroderma include puffiness and itchiness of the skin that becomes tight with uncomfortable joints. Small, hard calcium deposits can happen, as well as red spots under the skin. You can develop trouble swallowing, known as dysphagia dysphagia, as well as diarrhea, bloating, and constipation. There is no cure for scleroderma, but there are ways of overcoming the problems scleroderma causes. For example, there are medications to reverse or slow down the processes that cause damage around the body. Secondary Raynaud's is very important because of the serious complications it causes, such as ulcers and dry gangrene. In severe cases of Raynaud's, the blood supply can become severely diminished, causing the tissues to die. This problem is rare and normally only occurs in secondary Raynaud's. The initial sign is an open sore known as an ulcer, which develops on the surface of the body part. If you suspect a skin ulcer, contact your GP for advice. Left untreated, a red line appears on the skin marking the edges of the affected tissue. The tissue becomes cold and numb and can be painful as the tissue dies. This is known as dry gangrene. These complications are rare but serious. Normally, you will require admission to hospital or medication designed to thin your blood and help improve blood flow. I will finish this talk by summarizing about the medicines used to treat Raynaud's when lifestyle measures are not adequate, also what the common side effects of these medicines are, and what surgical options are available to treat severe Raynaud's or its complications. For more severe cases of Raynaud's, which are co more commonly seen in secondary Raynaud's, medication may be prescribed to reduce the number and severity of attacks, prevent tissue damage, and treat the underlying disease or condition. Depending on the cause of your symptoms, medications may help treat Raynaud's. To widen or dilate the blood vessels and promote the circulation, your doctor will prescribe calcium channel blockers. These are drugs that relax and open small blood vessels in your hands and feet, decreasing the frequency and severity of attacks in most people with Raynaud's. These drugs can also help heal skin ulcers on your fingers and toes. Examples of calcium channel blockers are nifedipine and amlodipine. Then there are alpha blockers. Some people find relief with drugs called alpha blockers, which counteract the actions of norepinephrine, a hormone that constricts blood vessels. Examples include doxazosin. Some doctors prescribe a drug that relaxes blood vessels. These are called vasodilators, such as nitroglycerin cream applied to the base of your fingers to help heal skin ulcers. Some vasodilators are commonly used to treat other conditions, including high blood pressure, 
losartan is, a, is such a drug. Erectile dysfunction medication, sildenafil, the antidepressant medication, fluoxetin. These may relieve the symptoms of free nodes. Work with your doctor to find out what works best for you. Tell your doctor if a drug loses effectiveness or causes worrisome side effects. I will discuss a little bit more in detail about nifedipine because this is the only medicine licensed to treat Raynaud's phenomenon in the UK. It does not cure Raynaud's but can help to relieve the symptoms. However, the side effects are common. These include edema or swelling of the hands and feet, headaches, heart palpitations, dizziness and constipation. In severe cases of usually secondary Raynaud's that do not respond to the above treatments, your rheumatologist may recommend intravenous medications such as prostacycline, also known as ipoprostinol or iloprost. For some cases of severe Raynaud's, approaches other than medications may be a treatment option. Nerves called sympathetic nerves in your hands and feet control the opening and narrowing of blood vessels in your skin. Cutting these nerves interrupts their exaggerated response. Through a small incision in the affected hands or feet, a doctor can strip away these tiny nerves around the blood vessels. This surgery, called the digital sympathectomy, may reduce the frequency and duration of attacks but it's not always successful. Doctors can also inject chemicals such as local anesthetics or Botox to block sympathetic nerves in affected hands or feet. You may need to have the procedure repeated if the symptoms return or persist. And I want to end this talk by emphasizing that for most people, Reynolds can be an annoying discomfort but rarely dangerous. Although it is typically a lifelong condition, it frequently does not get worse. On the other hand, Raynaud's phenomenon may be the first symptom of a rheumatic disease, so the condition should not be ignored. Patients may need to be examined, tested, and monitored to diagnose an associated rheumatic disease at its earliest stage. Thank you for listening. I would be happy to listen to your experiences with Raynaud's and answer any questions you may have. The contact details will be found on the SIUK website. Finally, I would like to thank SIUK for this opportunity to connect to you. I greatly admire the support they provide to a community that is being troubled by Raynaud's phenomenon.